Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. As always, guys, please check. Make sure you're subscribed to all three channels, Evolutionary E Arts and our newest Hearts Home. Checking in with the Schumann. We see there's been a lot of whiteout activity, and some of you guys may be feeling that energy and that vibe as everything here on Earth is seriously changing. It is, and a lot of people, I think, really are feeling it, and, and in varying degrees. Ah, yes, and let us listen over here. So there's multiple things they were talking about here over on Fox and Friends, and this is talking to a particular representative, Tim Burchett, Republican from Tennessee, and oh, he's part of the House Oversight Committee. And, uh, hmm, yeah, they did, they're talking about a lot of scandals, but they're talking about something different. So let's listen, starting at about three minutes and 19 seconds. Uh oh. Well, what we got to do is we got to go backwards here, here. And I got to actually turn the volume on. That would really help, wouldn't it? Okay. Harry Whistleblower claims there is extraterrestrial life. You are leaving the investigation in 15 seconds. Will we get answers as to whether or not we're alone? We're not alone, and we'll get some answers. And I talked to that man yesterday, and well, I'm hoping that he'll be hearing as well. But we've been planning this for quite some time. Wow. He did it in 10 seconds, and it. now I'm utterly terrified. <laughs> Congressman Burchett, thank you for joining us. There you have it. We are not alone. That's pretty definitive, is it not? So it's made it to mainstream, so now we just watch and wait. I, well, we'll do a little bit more than that. Mm. We, we can't sit still. And this is uh, Tim Burchett again, comments on the UFO report. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's something else out of this world. And, um, you know, we've been covering this thing up since the 40s, since Roswell or before then, I believe. I don't, I don't trust government. There's an arrogance about it. And um, I think the American public can handle it and they need to release everything. And that includes if they, in fact, do have a craft, which I believe at some point there was, we have uh, obtained some materials that are not of this world that are being studied by different members of industry, I've been told. And, um, you know, and part of the problem is there's two reports. There's one that is being made public and there's the one that's classified. So if a congressperson is briefed on the classified briefing, then basically they're not allowed by law to even talk on the issue of what's in that, even if it's something they, that they already know. So um, there's a lot of things going on within this. There's a lot. I think that has transpired since the 40s, and I'm, I'm referring to a, uh, the Roswell incident. But if you want to see any further, uh, 60 Minutes even did a special on it on the uh, the Tic Tac, not like like the like the candy is what it's shaped like, and um, the the videos. I've talked to several Navy pilots, the best in the world. So even more there about that disclosure, and of course, you know, this is really gotten people talking too about the vegas family that claimed to see aliens after something came from the sky here you could see a still now this looks just like what we see all the time fireball meteor oh a meteor came to the ground i mean it's the exact same thing the only thing different is that it ended up giving them an eight to ten foot tall person standing out there on the ground yeah, you know, so there's two people. There's two subjects. Yes, they're very large. They're like eight, nine foot, ten foot. They look like aliens to us. Big eyes. They got big eyes. Uh, I can't explain it. And a big mouth. They're shiny eyes. And they're human. They're, well, they're, they're human. And then he says they're 100% not human. So, you know, again, they're humanoid beings. And, again, if we look to some of the the Vedic texts, they tell you there's hundreds of thousands of humanoid species in our backyard. It, it's no big mystery, really. And again, I've, I've known and had friends that are members of different 
tribes you know, living on reservations and they're handed down stories that tell you we're not alone we know about the aliens there's all different sorts of ones you know you avoid those ones that kind of look a little you know lizard like they're not too nice and sometimes humans go missing and sometimes in in the case of some of these humans are dinner but but not all of these some some are benevolent you have all different types of beings here uh, definitely. And, and, you know, kind of, I think we were just talking to a family member just now. And most of us that are awake, they really feel like we've never been alone. And how could you even really fathom that we're the only ones? You know, how, how could that be? And then there's a lot of people who cannot fathom that, you know, there's anyone else. So there's clearly different, uh, two different parties. And here you have a 25-foot impression in the ground in the Las Vegas backyard where an object landed and 8 to 10-foot tall beings were sent. Again, these beings more than likely were, you know, over on Nellis. <laughs> I mean, quite honestly, you know, there's, there's regular interaction between some of our military and, and extraterrestrials. I mean, we, we played pool with people that have worked uh, as contractors for the military that that know these things you know for a fact of course can't really tell you all the details because again everybody is is sworn to secrecy just like the congressman was talking about you know and and here's another person that hello, hello, thinks hello. thinks they have a uh a zoom in this is again in vegas you know when you look at the sheer volume of sightings in the modern day alone, it's overwhelming. Then when you look to all the things we've seen throughout history and our myths and legends, Moses following, you know, again, a pillar of fire by night and a cloud during the day. Hello, what do you think that is? Well, that's the angel of God. What does angel really even mean? Well, it's a messenger of God. Yeah. Yeah. But, but what's God, really? And, you know, these, these are beings that just simply have more tech, technology than we do. And so they've been worshipped by people of, of inferior technology and understanding. They're just other people, basically. Well, they are. They're other people, and they go probably by, you know, a little bit different karmic laws in some way that the in some other way than than we do i mean we are here and we are shielded to a degree for this experience but that's only going on for so long and then we we reach a certain level of consciousness this is when these things start to come out into the open and it starts to become common knowledge that no we're we're not alone so I mean, to me, it feels like, yes, it's it's a controlled um, type of unraveling of information, but necessary. Yeah, yeah. When, when we look at the statements that have been put out in April, the director of Pentagon's new program for studying UFOs said he had seen no evidence of alien spacecraft. I should also state clearly for the record, says Sean Kirkpatrick, director of All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, or ARO, that in our research, Aro has found no credible evidence thus far of extraterrestrial activity, off-world technology, or objects that defy the known law of physics. The statement, which was part of a hearing on the topic, generated headlines around the world. UFO sightings are up, some sources say four to five hundred percent, but no proof of aliens yet. Really, there's tons of proof. They just ignore it. Tons and tons and tons of proof. You know, they could say, oh, there's no proof cell phones cause brain cancer. There's there's no proof that Roundup can harm your health. There's, I mean, we could go on and on with their no proofs that later out later get turned out to be just total, complete BS. As we're used to getting the BS, you know, and we don't trust any official sources because, you know, again, they're, it, it's all about controlling the narrative and, and they'll let it out at the right time and then you have david grush again uh talking about being received and he says the u.s has shot down non-human craft well you know again the u.s is in league and so are all the nations of the world with with different extraterrestrials now there's this line of thinking that we we signed a deal back in the eisenhower age with the ones that helped the uh, NAZIs get their technology. I mean, they were working on flying saucers. We've seen declassified 
info on that. You know, they had them. And then we have the whole Battle of Los Angeles. We have the DC flyover. Again, so much of this is, is again, controlled disclosure because we're leaving a, an age in which we are kept completely in the dark. They cannot keep us in the dark anymore. So they got to control the narrative. They know we're going to know we're not alone. I mean, that's just getting to be so obvious for even, you know, people that have been sleepwalking their entire lives. So, you know, you get all these declassified DODs and, and FBI and CIA, you know, official acknowledge, acknowledgements that there's stuff that they, they're aware of that's not anybody's, you know, manufacturing here on Earth. Here you have Bob Oshler, NASA mission specialist, claimed U.S. is in possession of operational alien spacecraft. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's it's because they've been helping us all along. But the ones that control our government, you know, the, <laughs> this I guess the best analogy is it's like, you know, the Empire of Star Wars. That's the fact. We're, we're behind enemy lines. These are not nice beings uh, that control uh, our planet, per se, and have controlled it, you know, during the Kali Yuga and a portion of the Bronze Age. And when we talk about these tall white beings that we're seeing now, they're not exactly the Anunnaki or even the Gigi beings. You know, there's so many different beings out there that, pers again, you could say that they are, you know, they're for hire. They're like contractors. And there's so many beings out there that are just simply merchants. And, and opportunistic and just like we have the military industrial complex here on earth again there's a military industrial complex out there as well mm -hmm. and it depends on you know what do these other beings need what are they looking for what are they trying to glean are are they really truly trying to bring some wisdom and guidance to the planet or are they in in for more of a controlling type of of situation and hoping that they can just you know jump in with the other controllers so they can have a piece of whatever too i mean now is the time where i think we need to be on guard and be developing our perceptive abilities to be able to read energies because this is where it's at things are going to a new level so this is talking about three landed ufos captured near alleged tall white aliens base in nevada and, you know, again, this is Nellis and that greater area uh, that is enormous. I mean, it, this area is actually, I bet you it's probably bigger than uh, Delaware and Rhode Island. It might even be the size of Rhode Island or bigger. It's huge, huge base. It's enormous out there. And we would see, we, we were again, you know, right out there in the desert, right next to it, we would see stuff coming and going all night, every night, as you could see these three bright lights from an airplane. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we've, we've never been alone. Never, never. You know, this, and this planet was, in fact, seeded with life, and it was reseeded with life. So, you know, for those that catch, there's two creation stories and and the B I B L E. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's there's really more than that. Really, when you get down to it, with all the, well, you know, all the chaos and all the regular cataclysms, the irregular cataclysms, and then the constant reseeding of life on the planet. And, you know, there's enough disclosure out there that it really shouldn't be a question mark for anybody. You can't count the number of officials that have spoken about this. And this one, again, is talking also about Charles Hall, who appeared on Australian TV in 2013, claiming that he interacted personally with tall whites at Nellis' Air Force Base in Nevada during the years he was employed by the U.S. Air Force as a weather observer. He was a Vietnam veteran as well. They, the tall whites, are thinner than we are, and they're very frail. They live 10 times as long as humans, 600 to 800 years. By the time they are 800, they're 8 to 9 feet tall. Their skeletons grow more than their internal organs. And, you know, again, these are not the Anunnaki that we hear of in the legends, and they're not the Ajiji either. They're, they're their own group. Yeah, they're 
a little bit different you know everybody's a little bit different you just i think you have to be open-minded to a lot of different scenarios that are going to start coming up but really i think this is a this is a snowball this is something that's going to snowball and a lot of people that were asleep are going to have questions and they're going to want to know what's up and those of you listening you're going to have answers so it's it's interesting he has some interesting stories the tall whites according to hall had a massive hangar constructed for them by the u.s air force in the late 40s when they were parked several large interstellar spacecraft and one on one occasion in the 1960s the u.s air force purchased clothes worth more than 600,000 from Sears stores and warehouses in Los Angeles, California, and delivered them to the secret tall white community at Indian Springs Valley in Nevada. Although he says he never witnessed the tall whites feeding, he was sure they ate like humans. He claims he once saw a tall white bodyguard to a high-ranking alien inside a restaurant at the old Aladdin Resort and Casino in Las Vegas. Did you work at that one? No, not at that one. Okay. The extraterrestrial being was sitting quietly, disguised as a human being. He was wearing a black suit and sunglasses, though it was dark at the time. He ordered a dinner, but he ate and drank very little. Hall said that some of his U.S. Air Force colleagues and friends told him the tall whites would go up into the mountains to harvest plants to prepare meals. I'm certain the tall whites ate only plants, never ate any meat or any of the ordinary meat products, he said. So, very interesting and curious, and that brings back the Bible phrase, uh, some have entertained angels unaware. Again, you're talking about extraterrestrials, and this is Paul Hellyer, former Canadian defense minister, and again, he's another one that came out and and spoke and said, UFOs are as real as the airplanes that fly over over your head. So, you know, again, there's, there's so many people so many people that have come out with this and they kind of have to because again we're getting to the point where we're we're figuring it out more and more people are figuring it out this says when the aliens are the government and the reality is the government is aliens it's kind of the reverse there as you see you know we've talked about these depictions you could go on and on with the paintings from a thousand years ago that depict people in spacecrafts. But what else do they depict? Angels. Angels with wings and people in spacecraft that happen to look a lot like meteors, don't they? So when you look at these, you know, these different meteors flying by, are they really meteors? No, I, a lot of these aren't. Some are, but not, not all of them. A lot of these are really ships because they behave exactly like the last one. If we posit an alien abduction taking place in ancient Israel, for instance, it would have been recorded much the same way that Genesis recorded angels mating with humans and creating monsters. Tom DeLong, yeah. This is a long time coming. And, you know, it, it is the reality that we've never, ever, ever been alone. No, we haven't. I and mean, there's all kinds of different beings mimicking us, watching what we do, and then they want to try it. So always keep in mind that you are an example for somebody. Well, you know the old saying, monkey see, monkey do. The aliens say, human see, human do. Right. Yeah, again, part of disclosure. As always, guys, thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Stay prepared out there. Much love, God bless, and namaste. Namaste.